This video will demonstrate how higher and lower motor current limits affect the speed and acceleration of an electric bicycle. We'll show that increasing the motor current limit leads to a higher initial acceleration. This bicycle has a 14S5P battery, a little Fokker controller, and a Crystalite 3540 hub motor. I've set the VESC to a maximum motor current value of 60, 90, or 120 motor amps, and I did a full throttle run for each of the motor current limits. The battery current limit was set to 100 amps. I loaded and cleaned the data and then plotted the wheel RPM time series for each of the runs. Motor theory tells us that the motor current is proportional to the motor torque and that the motor torque is proportional to the thrust force of the wheel. At lower speeds, if we ignore the wind and rolling resistances, the thrust force is proportional to the acceleration. From this RPM time series graph, we can see that the motor hits a given speed, say 200 RPM, more quickly for higher motor current limits. We can also see that the blue line for 120 amps is steeper than the green 60 amp line. The slope of these lines is the acceleration, so we see an increasing initial acceleration with increasing maximum motor current limits. Note that the top speed does not show any significant variation. Now let's connect the motor speed behavior to the motor and battery currents. We can use our simple controller model to predict what the currents will look like. At full throttle, the controller will try to maintain the maximum current limit value. As the vehicle accelerates, the controller output voltage increases due to the voltage generated by the motor, which requires an increase in the output electrical power. The battery current must increase in order to match the input power to the output power. Above a certain RPM, the motor current falls below the maximum current limit due to the limits of the battery voltage and the motor's generated voltage. Eventually, we hit the top speed where the motor torque and thrust is equal to the wind and road resistances. In the motor current time series graph, we see what we expect, a constant motor current of either 60, 90, or 120 amps up to a certain time, and then the current falls and levels out to the value needed to overcome the wind and rolling resistance. The battery current time series graph also matches our expectations. As the vehicle accelerates, the battery current increases up to the same RPM limit we saw in the motor current graph and then falls and levels off. Some patterns become more clear when we plot the graphs with a common x-axis. We see that the battery current peaks line up with the times when the motor current starts to fall. We also see that during the flat part of the motor current, the RPM graph line is straight and begins to level off as the motor current decreases, demonstrating that the acceleration is roughly constant during the constant motor current region. The previous graphs have all been time series graphs with the elapsed time on the x-axis. If we take each of these full throttle runs and plot the motor current against the motor speed, we can plot a torque speed curve. For this hub motor, torque in newton meters is very close to the current in amps. This graph allows us to see the RPM at which the powertrain can no longer provide the maximum motor current and the torque and acceleration begins to drop. Here are some takeaways. Increasing the maximum motor current limit increases the initial acceleration but not the top speed. Increasing the maximum motor current limit requires a higher amount of battery current in the mid RPM range. I hope this video was useful. In an upcoming video, I'll show how varying the battery current limits affects the vehicle's performance. Have fun and stay safe riding your EVs.